So now we're going to talk about a complete liquidation of a corporation. So a liquidation occurs when a corporation acquires all of its stock from its shareholders in exchange for all of its net assets, after which time the corporation ceases to do business. For tax purposes, Form 966 needs to be filed by the corporation in order to inform the IRS of the intention to liquidate its tax existence. Form, the form should be filed within 30 days after the owners resolve to liquidate the corporation. The tax consequences to the shareholders in a, comp, in a complete liquidation depends on the shareholders' identity and the ownership percentage in the corporation. All non-corporate shareholders receiving liquidating distributions have a fully taxable transaction. The shareholders treat the property received as full payment in exchange for their stock transferred. A non-corporate shareholder must compute capital gains or losses by subtracting the stock's basis from the money and fair market value of the of the property received in, in exchange in return. Shareholders' basis in the property received equals the fair market value of the property received. Debt assumed by the shareholder reduces the net fair market value, and it cannot be the net fair market value cannot be less than the debt assumed by the shareholder. A corporate shareholder owning more than 80% of the stock of the liquidating corporation does not recognize a gain or loss on the receipt of liquidating distributions. The tax basis in the property transfer carries over to the recipient, which allows a group of corporations under common control to reorganize their organizational structure without tax consequences. If it is a taxable liquidating distribution, the liquidating corporation recognizes all gains and certain losses on taxable distribution of property to shareholders. Liquidating corporation does not recognize a loss if the property is distributed to a related party, uh, distribution in non pro rata, or an asset distributed is disqualified property. For the definition of disqualified property, it is property acquired within five dates of the, five years of the distribution in a tax deferred 351 transaction or as a non taxable contribution to capital. Loss on the complete liquidation of a property is not recognized if the property was distributed, was acquired in a 351 transaction, or a contribution to capital, and principal purpose of this contribution was to recognize a loss by liquidating the corporation. Basically what they don't want you doing is having a non-taxable formation of this and then taking a capital loss by liquidating the corporation. This rule prevents a built-in loss existing at the time of distribution from being recognized by, tr by treating the basis of the property as, fair, as it being its fair market value at the time it was contributed to the corporation. This provision is designed as an anti-stuffing provision to prevent shareholders from contributing property with built-in losses to a corporation shortly before liquidation to offset, gains proper, offset gain property distrib distributed in the liquidation. If we're talking about a non-taxable liquidation, it would be a liquidation the corporation does not recognize a gain or a loss on tax-free distributions of property to an 80% corporate shareholder. Liquidation-related expenses, including the cost of preparing, a, effectuating a plan to complete the liquidation, and, deduct, and are deductible by the liquidating corporation on its final 1120. Deferred or capital expenditures, such as organizational expenditures, are also deductible on the final return. So let's do an example of this, of a liquidating distribution. So a gain and loss on a liquidation of an asset to a shareholder is the fair market value of any property received, less any debt assumed by the shareholder, less the adjusted tax basis in the stock equals a gain or a loss on the liquidation. So. We have this example. After several years of trying to get Air 360 Air off the ground, it became clear to Jim, Ginny, and Al that there were not enough snowboarding uh, demand for snowboarding products in East Lansing to make their business venture profitable. Reluctantly, the three owners decided to liquidate the corporation. Once again, they summoned their tax advisor, Louis Tully, to help them understand the tax consequences of liquidating the corporation. Louis constructed the company's tax accounting balance sheet, which is produced below. The parties agreed that they would sell off the remaining inventory, land, and building, and collect the remaining receivables. After the sale, they would pay taxes of $70,000, assuming a 35% corporate tax rate, on the, on the gains, and divide the remaining $430,000 in cash 
based on the shares, 50% to Al, 40% to Jim, and 10% to Ginny. Um, Ginny receives $43,000 representing her 10% after all the debts are paid. Ginny's tax basis in the stock is $60,000. What gain or loss will be realized on the exchange? So, we're going to take the fair market value of all property transferred, which is $43,000, less any debt assumed. Zero and less adjusted tax basis in stock, and that's Ginny is sixty thousand dollars. So gain or loss on liquidation. So this would be a $17,000, and it would be a capital loss for Jenny. She's held this asset for more than a year. The next question is, what amount of this loss will be recognized on the exchange? All of the loss will be recognized by Jenny as a capital loss. All right. Now assume that suppose rather than sell the land, Air distributed 360 Air distributed the land with fifteen thousand dollars cash to Al, representing his fifty percent interest in the net fair market value of the company. Uh, Al's stock basis is a hundred thousand. And then cash distributed was fifteen thousand, and then fair market value of property distributed. Let's see what they said up here. They're going to distribute the land to Al, so two hundred thousand. What amount of gain or loss will be realized on this transaction? So let's go ahead. I'm going to take this here. Come up above. Fair market value of all print property transferred $200,000 plus the cash received $250,000. There is no debt assumed, and there is a $100,000 tax basis. So gain or loss on the distribution for L will be $115,000. The next question says, what is Al, what amount of gain will Al recognize? And it will be all $115,000 of the gain will be recognized. And then, what is Al's tax basis in the cash and the land received? Al's tax basis is equal to fair market value of property received for $215,000. Okay, so. Next one says, assume a complete liquidation that Jim receives 172000 representing his 40% ownership, and his tax basis is 240000 What amount should he realize? All right. So fair market value of all the property transferred, he got $172,000 cash. He didn't receive any debt. His adjusted basis... Is two hundred forty thousand. So add this all up. Okay. 
and Jim has a loss of $68,000. The question becomes, what amount of gain or loss will he, what amount of loss will he recognize? He can recognize up to $68,000 loss to offset capital gains or take a maximum of $3,000 loss capital loss and carry forward the remaining loss. Now let's pretend that 360 Air was 100% owned but as a subsidy of SCR and SCR liquidated the company into itself. What and their tax basis was 300,000 in the stock. So how much would they realize as a gain or loss on this? Well, we still take the fair market value of the property received. Look at this. 500,000 total. They didn't assume any debt. The adjusted tax basis is 300,000 as given in the problem. So we're going to add these all up. And there's going to be a gain of $200,000. The next question becomes, how much will they recognize? And the answer is zero will be recognized because more than 80% Um, by corporate therefore our game is deferred um, the final question was what is SRC's tax basis and the assets and liabilities received in the liquidation and the answer is that their tax liabilities will not, um, the tax basis will not change. SCR will inherit the carryover tax basis and the assets and liabilities from 360 Air. Now let's assume the same situation and let's assume the company's balance sheet is the same as below. The question becomes what gain or loss would 360 Air recognize in the result of distributing all of these assets? So basically, they would recognize a loss for 360 air. The difference is so uh, inventory. Building and land. Total gain or loss equals the sum of this. So this is an example of a corporate liquidation.